If you drag the timeline seeker now, you will see that the character is switching between the two positions. It's time to add the next position for our character. Come to the first frame. In the next pose, the character's left leg is lifted forward and the right leg is at the back. The exact opposite of what we created on the first keyframe. Let's see how to do this. First, copy all the keyframes to the 13th frame. For this, select all keyframes on the first frame, press and hold down the Alt key, drag the keyframes to the 13th frame and drop them. Now release the Alt key. As you observed before, this position will be the exact opposite of the first position. Select the right hand, select the free transform tool by pressing Q and rotate it forward. Move the entire shoulder slightly forward. Then select the left hand and rotate it backward. To see if the positions are ok, drag the timeline seeker forward and backward. Let's work on the leg positions now. Before you begin, check whether you are on the 13th frame. Now, select the right leg. Rotate it backwards with the free transform tool. Now double click on the right leg symbol. On the timeline, select the 13th frame on all layers and press F6 to add a keyframe there. Select the calf and feet right symbols and move their pivot point to the knee joint. Rotate it to match the left leg that can be seen in faded color. Observe that the shoes are going below the ground level. To fix this, double click on the feet right symbol. You will see that we haven't added keyframes on the 7th and 13th keyframes yet. Select the frames on both the layers and press F6 to add keyframes. Go to the 13th keyframe and select the front part of the foot. With the free transform tool, rotate it so it is parallel to the ground. Adjust the outlines of the front part with the back part. Double click outside to exit the right feet symbol. Select the feet part and push it down with the down arrow on your keyboard till it touches the ground level. Move and situate it on the screen to suit the left leg's proportion. Now double click to come to the boy symbol. To see the effect, drag the timeline seeker again. Let's complete this level by creating the new position for the left leg. Double click on the left leg to enter the symbol. Select the 13th frame for all layers on the timeline and press F6 to add keyframes. Come back to the boy symbol. Make sure that you are on the 13th frame and select the left leg. Use the free transform tool to rotate it so that it comes forward. Again, it is important to keep a watch on the heel of the shoe. It shouldn't go below the ground level. Use the up arrow on your keyboard to bring the corner of the heel just on the ground level. You can see if this is looking ok by dragging the timeline seeker forward and backward a number of times. If you find something odd, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard, moved leg, so it suits the character design. Another observation for you. If you have observed people walking, you would have noticed something interesting. When their feet are apart, they seem shorter. When the feet are together, they appear slightly taller. Let's apply the principle to the character. On the first frame, select the upper body and push it slightly down with the keyboard arrow keys. The feet are apart again on the 13th frame. So, let's repeat the process here too. Select the upper body and push it a little downward. You would have also observed that the neck also bobs up and down as we walk. To achieve the same effect, go to the first frame, select the head and push it just a bit down with the down arrow keys. Go to the 13th frame and repeat the process. Run the timeline seeker back and forth to see the effect. Now, when you see the walk, you would observe that the frame number 7 doesn't look natural. It is stiff, as if the character stands still after every step and then takes the next step. That's not how people walk. When we walk, we never stand on both feet together. So, 
what happens when we come to the midpoint between the two steps. Let's recap. On the first frame, we have the left foot back and the right foot forward. So, the next step would have the left foot forward. But before going forward, the left leg has to bend in the knee, then bend forward from the waist and then straighten forward. Let's see how to animate this. Go to the 7th frame on the timeline. Select the keyframe on the layer named boy underscore leg left. Rotate it forward so the knee comes forward just a bit. Now, double click on it to see the three parts of the left leg. Visit the 7th frame here as well. Now, select the calf and feet parts. Drag the pivot point to the center of the knee joint and rotate the lower leg just so that it comes directly below the body. Drag and move the selection to suit the thigh of the left leg. Match the edges of the thigh and calf symbols using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Come back to the boy symbol by double clicking outside. With the free transform tool, readjust the leg so that the left knee and feet are ready to stretch forward the next step. To see if this looks natural, drag the timeline seeker back and forth. Observe that on the first and thirteenth keyframes, the character's head is bending forward, but on the seventh frame, it looks stiff and unnatural. To remedy this, again go to the seventh frame, click on the head symbol. Now, select the free transform tool again and rotate just a bit backward. Use the timeline seeker to see if the effect is natural. Seems good. Just like the keyframe in between the right and left steps, you need to have a keyframe between the left and the right steps too. Let's draw this midpoint at the 19th frame. For this, go to the 7th frame on the timeline, select all the keyframes on all the layers, press and hold down the Alt key, drag the keyframes to the 19th frame and drop them. Now release the Alt key. Now, when the left leg goes forward, it has to bend in between. In the same manner, this time, the right leg is going forward. So, let's bend it on the 19th frame. Observe that this position will be the exact opposite of the position on the 7th frame. Let's go to work on it. Select the left leg and double click to edit it. As we have done before, add a keyframe for all the layers on the 19th frame. Now, rotate the left leg so it comes directly below the character's body. Now, double click on the right leg to make further changes. You'll find that we need to add keyframes on the 19th frames. Here, we'll simply copy the keyframes on the 7th frame and paste them on the 19th. Go to the 7th frame, select all the keyframes on all the layers. Now press and hold down the Alt key. Drag the keyframes to the 19th frame and drop them. Release the Alt symbol. Double click outside to exit the symbol and come to the boy symbol. Rotate the right leg to create the position where the lower leg should bend. To edit the position further, again double click and enter the right leg symbol. On the 19th frame, select the calf and the feet. Shift the pivot point to the center of the knee. With the free transform tool, rotate it backwards and adjust it to suit the outline of the thigh part. Exit the symbol. To see the result, drag the timeline seeker. Look at each part of the character as it changes position. Try and spot any problems of proportion or position and fix the errors if you find any. This is also a good time to revisit every little symbol and see if appropriate keyframes are added to all the layers on the 7th, 13th, 19th and 25th frames. 
what we have done till now is that we have created basic poses for the sidewalk cycle. It's time to assign motion twin to all the layers. For this, come to the boy symbol. On the timeline, select all the frames from all the layers. Right click and select create motion twin. You'll find some movements seem odd. Let's resolve this issue. Double click the right hand symbol to enter it. Now, on the timeline, select all the frames on the layers. Right click and select create motion twin. You'll also find that the layers do not have the required keyframes on the 13th and 19th frames. As you learned before, copy the first keyframe onto the 13th frame and the 7th keyframe onto the 19th frame. Use the Alt and Drag technique to speed up the process. Next, enter to the right leg symbol and give motion twin to all the frames on all layers. The symbol to come to the boy symbol. Drag the timeline seeker to see if the animation is playing right. You can see that overall the walk is looking okay. But on deeper observation, you'll find that the positions of the character's body parts are showing cuts once a while. The next step is to fine tune the walk cycle. Make it still smoother and natural and fix the small errors to achieve the perfect sidewalk cycle for the character. This will be our next and final session in this sidewalk cycle tutorial. In this session, you will learn how to remove all the rough edges and cuts visible in their character. To make the animation much smoother, you will know how to create the in-between positions. Most important of all, you will learn how to synchronize every part of the character with other parts for a much better result. As you observed, the animation isn't totally perfect yet. To make it so, you'll have to magnify the character and work on it. Observe that at this stage, you'll be working far more inside the symbols, scaling, skewing, stretching, rotating and editing them to create a far smoother sidewalk cycle. Here's what you should aim at. To start the proceedings, go to the timeline, select the fourth frame on all the layers and create a keyframe between the first and 7th frame by pressing F6. Let's visit the layers one by one and iron out the finest of errors. We'll take the right leg first. You can see that on the 4th frame, the shoe is going below the ground level. With the up arrow on your keyboard, move the right leg and settle it at the ground level. Now, enter the symbol by double clicking it. The first process you execute once you are inside any symbol is to create the new keyframe on the fourth frame. Select that frame on all the layers and press F6. Notice how the tip of the character's right foot is pointing up a bit too much. In reality, when you walk, the tip of your shoes make a very slight upward angle to begin with. To change the steep angle to a gentle one, select the feet symbol and rotate it using the free transform tool. Push it closer to the ground level using the down arrow keys on your keyboard. Now to the calf part. According to the original design, the bottom of the pant should cover some part of the shoes. So, using the free transform tool, skew the shape horizontally and vertically to conform to the design. Adjust the thigh symbol by matching it with the calf symbol. To achieve the perfect proportion in the design, you'll have to work on all these parts simultaneously. The key points to be remembered are recognizing the volume of the parts and being consistent with the design. To check the result, exit the symbol and run the timeline seeker forward and backward. The new keyframe looks okay, but when you magnify the right leg, you'll again see the shoes 
venturing below the ground level. This is around the 10th frame. So let's put an in-between keyframe here. Select the 10th frame on all the layers and press F6. Now magnify the right leg symbol further and move it upwards till the foot touches the ground level guide. If you look carefully, you'll note that the shoe lines are not matching either. To remedy this, double click and enter the right leg symbol. As before, insert keyframes on the 10th frame of all layers. Now select the feet symbol and rotate it so the bottom line matches the ground level guide. If the snap facility is causing problems, you can switch it off for the moment.